All right, so UFC Fight Night Gone versus Spivak just wrapped up, and I'm here to give you my thoughts on the whole event. Starting out, I want to talk about the crowd, honestly. I think the French crowd is the best crowd that MMA has, and um, it, it just, like, even the very first fight of the night, like, it wasn't a fun fight at all, but the crowd were just so into it, and they were just bringing the building alive, and it was just... Really great to see crowds like Singapore and the France one, just all the European crowds, really. And I think Singapore is in Asia, so <laughs> all, that region just has a very good crowd atmosphere from all the sporting events, football and whatnot. I think the culture that they've built is quite better than America crowds, and a lot of like the American crowds can be pretty spoiled, I guess you could say. They don't really appreciate it as much, and it shows with um things like the Korean zombies retirement and just this entire event in general it's only the second one France has ever had and they made it very memorable just like the first one and starting out actually no before we get into that fight I want to say uh, I didn't really talk about last week's card I was busy I've been working a lot and um yeah fuck Brazil <laughs> uh they are just uh for what they did to Glover and to see like even Korean Zombie going out on a loss, getting the reception he got, and for everyone to just leave before Glover. Oh, it was just... Brazil really sucks for that one. But anyway, we're getting into the main event. Gone versus Spivak. The fight was pretty pitter-patter. It was slow, technical. Gone was staying at range. Spivak only really tried to get it to the ground once. He shot a double leg and got sprawled on. Gone got back to his feet pretty quickly. And from there, it was all gone, man. Spivak landed a couple shots, but Gone was chewing up his leg with some nice light kicks. And he was digging to the body really well. At one point, I think he broke his rib with a right hook to the body, it looked like. Spivak's, um, under his left arm, there was a big welt, and it looked like a rib was poking out. So, yeah, that was what I'd say led to the finish. I think Spivak might have been able to last a bit longer, but <laughs> that was really bothering him, and Gon was just picking him apart, going body head, body head, and that eventually led to a TKO, very similar to the one he got on tied to Ivasa. He did these weird hammer fists on the feet, and um, Spivak didn't really go to the ground like Ty did, but yeah, he still got the TKO win in the second round, so good for Cyril Gon. I'm glad he won that. I definitely would have preferred that to... Spivak winning. But after the fight, there was a weird moment in the cage. I, <laughs> Cyril Gon, like squared up on one of the um, security dudes who wasn't letting his friend into the cage, and it was it was weird. But um, yeah, the speech he gave, he didn't really call anyone out. Uh, Bisping suggested the Aspinall call out, and that would be a potential fight, and Gon kind of dodged it. He said he wanted a title fight, which I don't think he's getting, even though I think Aspinall and Gon should both be ranked above Stipe at this point. Stipe hasn't won in years, and the last dude he beat was his, like, retired DC who's on commentary now, and that doesn't really give him much right to be number one contender in my eyes. Stipe got to be more active if he wants that, and I don't even think he should get the title shot. Uh, yeah, and I also think Pavlovich should be ranked above Stipe at this point, so... Actually, let me check the rankings. I... Stipe might actually be lower than I think. Pavlovich might be number one. I forgot about him. Okay, I correct myself then. Cyril, okay, I thought I completely forgot about Sergei Pavlovich. I um, so he's actually number one. Cyril's number two, and then Stipe's number three. I think that's more fair, I guess. Tom Aspinall being ranked above Curtis Blades is interesting, but I guess Curtis did lose his last. But yeah, from here I would like to see Gon fight either Pavlovich or. Aspinall, but um, Pavlovich is the backup fight for Gon and Jones whenever that's happening, is what I've heard. So yeah, at this point I think it makes sense to do Gon versus Aspinall, but I don't know if Aspinall, or I mean I don't know if Gon really wants that fight, so we'll see how it goes. The UFC probably are going to get their way as they usually do. Moving on to the co-main event, Manon Firot versus Rose Namajunas, and that fight was pretty good. It was my second favorite fight on the card, and um, there was a nasty headbutt in round two that caused quite the cut on Maron Firat. Despite that, she still went on to win the rest of that round and um, win the third on one of the judges' scorecards. I don't really agree with that too much, but 
Um, she still picked up the unanimous decision win. And yeah, congratulations to Man Known Federal. She is a beast, truly living up to her nickname. So from here, uh, it's interesting, the Blanchfield thing, because I really like Blanchfield, but uh, I don't know, because at the same time, Ta uh, not Tatiana Suarez, um, because Talia Santos had that really close fight with Valentina Shevchenko, and I remember when I was watching it at the time, I thought Talia won against Valentina, so... I don't know whether or not you give Manon the title shot or Aaron Blanchfield. I think it kind of comes down to how that cut heals for Manon and how quickly the turnaround's looking to happen. Either one of them have a completely fair claim to it. Um, personally, I would give it to Aaron just because I pref I kind of like her more. and um, Yeah, I think she has better wins because Rose was um, at straw weight and... Aaron Blanchfield just beat the girl who arguably defeated the greatest flyweight fighter of all time. So, yeah, I think you give it to Blanchfield, but if not, you give it to Manon. I won't care either way. I think the fight would probably be more fun to watch with Manon, uh, the Grasso fight or Sevchenko fight, whichever one of them end up winning. And, yeah, that's what I'd like to see done moving forward. As for Rose, she can retire if she wants, otherwise... It's really just up to her. I don't really know what I want to see from her at this point. I don't quite want to see her go back down to strawweight to fight Wei Li again. So what would a good fight for Rose be? If Valentina loses, I would actually like to see Rose versus Valentina. That would be pretty interesting. You could also do Chikagian or Jessica Andrade at flyweight or strawweight, whichever one those ladies prefer. But there's no reason they should have to cut that extra weight when they both are fighting at flyweight currently and Jessica's ranked at six in both of them so yeah you might as well do it at flyweight and yeah Rose didn't look that bad she was just kind of behind she broke her finger early I think which probably had a little bit of an impact on the fight but that's how fights go man you get injured and things impacted so that's not really much of an excuse Manon got headbutted and she was leaking like crazy so yeah good fight and that brings us to our featured fight of the night, but not St. Denis versus Thiago Moises. And this was my favorite fight of the night. Up until this point, I was kind of bored. This card was really disappointing outside of the crowd, honestly. And yeah, I thought quite a fun fight. It ended via TKO from Benoit St. Denis. He was pounding away on Thiago Moises, and he just never recovered and he didn't try to get up the ref gave him like every chance it was a bit of a late stoppage honestly but yeah good win from Benoit Saint Denis I would move him up to rank number 15 after that very impressive get him a ranked opponent for sure now prior to that we had Volkan Uzdemir versus Bogdan Guskov and I find it weird that they gave a debuting dude a uh, ranked opponent like Volkan but, I mean, I think they did it with Yuri Proshka, too, and we saw what happened with him. So, yeah, light heavyweight, middleweight, heavyweight divisions are all wide open for guys to just pop in and fight rank contenders, I guess. Uh, you wouldn't see stuff like that happening at lightweight. Some dude who's debuting just going in there and fighting, like, I don't know, Dan Hooker or something. Well, I guess I could see them doing that with Dan Hooker trying to give him a win, but, yeah, it was a okay fight. They went to bang a little bit and then when it got to the ground Volkan just kind of took over now before that we had some horrible refereeing and the commission also did a horrible job a horrible job um, so it was William Gomez versus Giannis Gamori and um, yeah it was a pretty close fight up until the third round when an arguable low blow happened the kick definitely made contact with the cup but it landed on like the hip but I think since it still landed on the shorts you kind of have to call it a low blow and instead of like giving Giannis Gamori time to recover or even just saying no it wasn't a low blow continue he just calls the fight like uh, Gamori was submitting or like quitting <laughs> which he wasn't because he like immediately was protesting like no I got low blowed what are you doing I don't want this fight to end but 
like even the review official apparently thought it was a clean shot and they gave it to Gomez via TKO which is horribly rigged and I hope they overturn that because that is just baloney and yeah before that we had Morgan Chikiri Cherry I don't know Cherry I don't know French name versus Manolo Zchicki uh, this fight was not that long. It ended in the first round via, what was it, uh, KO, TKO, one of the two. But, um, yeah, good good fight for the debuting dude, even though I don't think either of them were that good. And he just kind of got a can who he was given to crush. This was a weird fight to have on the main card. I would have... I don't know, there's not many others you could throw up there from the prelims, though, I guess. So, yep, moving down to the prelims. Got Taylor Lapoulis versus Kalan Lorgan. Oh my god, these names are getting problematic. These Europeans, gosh. Uh, that one was a decision win for Taylor. And yeah, I don't really have too much to say on that one. Honestly, I um, I woke up and saw the first two fights of this card and then passed out while waiting for the Edwards versus Cornell fight. So I'll just tell you guys the results of those ones because I didn't really see enough to have a opinion, I guess. And yeah, so we had three decisions, or no, just two decisions from Angelosa versus Rice McKee, Rosa Lo nah, Losa got the win by a decision. And then Nora Cornhole beat Jocelyn Edwards by a decision as well. Jocelyn Edwards. And before that, this fight is the one I would have probably put on that opening main card spot. We had Farid Basharat versus... Oh, goodness, I'm not even going to try with that for his name. Cl Clydeson? Oh, actually, that was pretty easy. Clydeson Rodriguez. And, um... Yeah, Clydeson got a good head kick early on, but after that, Farid Basharat just took him down and finished him there from submission. Uh, pretty good fight from Basharat. I liked seeing him and his brother on the Contender Series last year, and I think they're both going to do great things. As for his next fight, I would like to see like maybe a Douglas Silva Deandraj versus Basharat. I think that would be a pretty solid banger. And yeah, moving on to the fight that started out the whole card. It was um Zara Farin versus Jacqueline Cal Cal Cav Alcanti. Cav Alcanti. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, that fight was boring. <laughs> Very slow from both women. Uh, Farin, I saw her stats, said she had a lot of early finishes, and um, commentary was talking her up as like gassing out in her last fight and going to a decision, so it looked like in this fight she kind of tried to pace herself, but she ended up just fighting like she was gassed like the whole fight and got outworked. Yeah, not much else to say about that one. Overall, though, I enjoyed the card quite a bit, and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to next week. I think it's going to be a bunch of good fights coming up in the future, so can't wait, and let me know what you guys thought about the fights. Um, I would love to hear it. Other than that, this has been your boy Pootie Chang, and I'm out of here. Peace.